And here it is, the completely reassembled Juno 106 panel board. And as you can see, it is absolutely, totally clean. Every single tack switch has been replaced with an absolutely brand new tack switch. Isn't that gorgeous? And uh, these sliders that I got from um, uh, Technology Transplant, which I was complaining about being really stiff. Well, you know that stuff I used to wreck the other tack switches? Well, it actually works pretty good as actually is a slider lubricant, which is kind of what it's designed for, not tacked cleaning. Remember, you don't put any lubricant inside tacked switches. That kills them. Okay? Take it from me, because I just did it to a batch of them. Now, fortunately, they were all old uh, from the original batch. And do you want to know how much these cost to replace? I think they were about 15 cents each. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. I got a 100 of them uh, for, you know, what? with chipping and stuff included for under under 20 bucks so um, you can't really go wrong here uh, replace all your tacts now you're gonna need a solder sucker to do it right uh, and not a solder sucker you know with the, the plunge one but an actual um, vacuum powered one because there's so many switches it really would take you forever if you did it the other way as it was I uh, of course took these in took these out took these in took these out enough times in a row and uh, you know a few of the solder pads actually lifted in fact, let me see if I can show you that. There you see that, that solder pad and that solder pad? Those two lifted. Now, that would normally be a disaster, except those solder pads weren't actually connected to anything, as you can see from the trace. So, because nothing was actually connected to them, it wasn't a big deal. Um, but it would have been a big, big problem if there was actually a trace connected to that. Um, and I guess what it is is that those solder pads without traces have nothing else to hold them down. And nothing to actually act as a uh, thermal wick to take the heat away. So that's the reason why they delaminated. Um, I guess I'm using too hot a soldering iron at this point. So at any rate, uh, I got it all connected up, and wouldn't you know it, it totally works. It works like a charm. Um, you know, you can't really... Uh, now, I gotta tell you, <laughs> when I first connected this, I had a couple of problems. I foolishly um, connected this jack uh, to this location down here. Um, because they're exactly the same. See that jack and that jack? They're the same, and they even have the same color wires. So don't even let the wire coloring, which is a technique I normally use, be careful. You can get those two juxtaposed, and then these two, uh, there's a, the, this one here that goes to the power, uh, and then there's another one that goes over here, and um, guess what? I got them jumbled as well, and it's thankful that in my confusion I didn't blow the, something up. Anyway, um, can I show you this? Let me see. Let's get these little headphones here. It's not playing anything because it's in manual mode. Ah, I have to hit a high note. Okay. Yeah, I know, this is a poor way to demonstrate it, but we'll, uh, we'll have a little concert later on. But as you can see, these tack switches totally work. And uh, that's a beautiful thing that they work the way they do. Totally no problem. These sliders are all beautiful. I just did some test editing with them, and uh, they, they do a fine job. So, hey, guess what? This thing can go back in, but we have one more thing to worry about. Actually, we have two more things to worry about. First of which is felts. We need the felt pads. Remember the old ones, the neoprene ones were just totally crumbly crap. We got to replace those. Um, I got a few things in mind. I might use felt or I might use something else, a little bit more space age. And then we're going to back up the uh, the patches on this and we're going to back it up using a pretty cool piece of software uh, it's totally unreleased at this point but it's uh, from our good friends at SciCraft Designs it's Visor Juno 106 and uh, we're going to use that to back up this at uh, this synth and then having backed it up we're going to do a, um, a coin transplant on that and of course you might remember we have another Juno waiting for this as well um, oh, and one other thing, too. We're also going to do the retro bite, bright maneuver on both the these synths uh, buttons. 
they're going to go through retrobrite conditioning. So we've got lots more to, to do, but uh, things are definitely looking good. So that's all for now.